This episode of The Nod is brought to you by Planned Parenthood. Planned Parenthood believes everyone should have access to affordable birth control. If you agree, join Planned Parenthood in fighting against the recent rollbacks by the Trump administration that no longer require employers to include birth control coverage in their health insurance plans. This is happening now. To join the fight for affordable birth control, text NOD to 22422. Planned Parenthood will periodically text you ways to take action. That's NOD to 22422. Message and data rates may apply. From Gimlet Media, this is The Nod. I'm Eric Eddings. And I'm Brittany Luce. So, in this week's episode, we're going to be dishing out some shout-outs. Shout-outs. To some things that we love. Sadly, not Popeyes in this case. Not Popeyes today. Today. Today, yeah, exactly. Not this episode. Soon. But some things that we do love. One of them is funny. True. And one of them is a little more, like, poignant. Also true. But they're both great. So later in this episode, Eric, you know, who I think he would like to be referred to as an internationally renowned tastemaker. It's my true title. Your true title, sure. Anyway, he is going to give a shout-out to something that he just, like, can't stop thinking about. But first... We are going to listen to a shout-out from a very close friend of the show. One of Eric's best friends, a young man named John. (sighs) What you may hear registering in Eric's voice, and what you might remember, is that during our Buy Black episode, when, you know, Eric and I had a scavenger hunt, had to go to black businesses, John actually gave me a leg up on the competition. He gave me a tip on a black beauty supply store that sold black do-rags. And Eric feels... Some type of way about that. For the sake of this episode, I'm going to ignore the sense of betrayal that I feel Mm -hmm. in my heart. But yes, what you said is true. John is one of my best friends. We have been friends since middle school, actually. And the other day, he hit me up because he had something that he felt that he has to tell our listeners about that changed his life. If you want to go from eating ramen noodle dinners to Peter Lugas on a Tuesday... I would say there's one thing you must have. And I'm going to tell you about it. When I first got to New York, I didn't have much. And, you know, I'm a young kid. I'm just, you know, trying to make it day to day. I was dead broke, man. Uh, (laughs) I had nothing. I was literally sleeping on a futon that was full of dog hairs. And uh, I would think my internship, I was making like $6.00. It's the New York grind, man. It, it was hell. Like, it's, it honestly sucked, you know, not knowing where your next meal was coming from, you know, loading up on ramen noodles, eating oatmeal uh, that my mom provided in a care package. It was sad, man, like so depressing, dude. Uh, it was a low point in my life, you know. I, I was a little depressed. There was a young lady in my life uh, named Lauren Hill, not the singer, who I was definitely, definitely, definitely in that friend zone with. She was always there for me. While I was struggling, She, if I needed someone to talk to, we've been best of friends since the 11th grade. But you, I never wanted to mess up that friendship with Lauren. Some things are just so valuable. You... you choose not to risk them. So here's the thing, man. When you're in New York, you see all these nicely dressed people. And I worked in advertising, so these people have a lot of style and they have a lot of swagger. So my style at the time was more so whatever I could, I could catch on, on the TJ Maxx clearance section. Uh, and I just realized, man, one, one day just hit me. It's like, man... While clothes don't make the man, you got to start dressing for the job you want. So while I was interning, I was like, you know what? I want them to hire me full time. So one of the simplest things for me to do at the time was to try to go and find something in my, my favorite store. 
I went to Macy's and I go in the, I go into Macy's. I'm walking up and you know you pass the regular like you pass like Nautica, Tommy Hill figure, uh, and then you you hit the polo section, but then you get like the traditional polo. And then you go to the end, you see like denim supply. And I saw these like illuminated white jeans. Like they just called for me. When I saw those jeans, my mind raced to, there's this one speech that Ric Flair gave on this wrestling show. bottom line is, my whole career, I've always done better than anybody else. Or he's like, it's hard putting these alligator shoes shoes on. I dress myself in cashmere. Yeah. I dress myself in hundred dollar cleaning flags. I dress myself in alligator shoes. And when I saw those jeans, it was like everything that man said was just right there in front of my face, just waiting for me to grab it. I did not try those jeans on. I didn't I didn't I didn't have to try them on. I knew they were going to be right size. I just knew. And the best thing was when I went to the register to check out, the young lady at the, at the register, she was like, oh. She could sense that, oh, he's leveling up. The glow up started from there, man. It was, it was an awesome moment. The first time I wore them was like around the 4th of July. And I was around a lot of, you know, cool people you know, at a rooftop party and, you know, I walk in and I had the blue jean shirt, long sleeve Oxford, white jeans, my red Kohans that, that laced up with a fresh haircut. I was wearing red, white, and blue. I was the dream. I made Martin proud. I could see like the, the fireworks uh, popping off. Everybody's just like turning in like, damn, I didn't know John had that. I'm not gonna lie, I wore that outfit, same one, to our summer office party. Crushed it. So I'm starting to get uh, brought into new business pitches with Fortune 500 companies. My LinkedIn is just jumping every day now, you know. New opportunities arose and I, I accepted a job elsewhere so I could hit that new junior ballin territory. TJ Maxx broke John, uh, was eating ramen noodles. Junior balling John could almost have a planned trip to Peter Lucas on a Tuesday. The jeans brought on a much needed confidence. And when I hit that, my mindset was, was changing. You realize like, hey, I'm, I'm hitting certain goals in my life and certain I'm, I'm hitting these new levels. I need somebody to share this with. I started thinking about my relationship with Lauren and how, you know, when I was at that low point, she was always there for me, but I was in that friend zone. Is there a way to glow up with Lauren? I wanted to take our relationship to that next level. You know, we had joked around in the past where she would invite me out to Chicago uh, where she was living. And I was like, ah, I can't make it. And so <laughs> this time I took her up on an offer. I called her bluff. I was like, you know what? Let's do this. Let's make this happen. The white jeans were priority number one in my suitcase. I wrapped them in plastic so that they couldn't get dirty. You only have one shot with this, man. One shot. I go out there, and we went out to a party at a club. It wasn't until we got to the club where she could see me in my full gear. And, you know, it's among people just living life and enjoying myself. But I think it, it really hit her, like, what am I doing? This is, this is an amazing man I have in front of me. And she, she was just, like, on me. Like, we had, we had danced together in the past, but, you know, it's one thing to see someone just really throw it back at you. Sorry, it's a family show. She put it, she put it on your boy. Uh, and 
I whispered in her ear, I said, hey, you, you feeling the white jeans, aren't you? She said, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, it was it's like bait, man. She she was hooked. She was hooked. We're now uh, getting married in May, so I, I, I say the white jeans have helped me out in all facets of my life. If you sit down and spend time with yourself and really feel that now you are already to move on from that ramen noodle lifestyle to now capturing your inner Ric Flair glow. I, John Vaughn, suggest that you go out to the, the nicest Macy's you can go to and pick you up a pair of nice, tailored white jeans. After the break, Eric has a recommendation of his own. This episode of The Nod is brought to you by Planned Parenthood. Planned Parenthood has been fighting to make affordable birth control accessible to everyone. And that fight is now more urgent than it's ever been. That's because the Trump administration recently rolled back birth control coverage, allowing employers to deny coverage on religious or moral grounds. So if you support Planned Parenthood, now's the time to ditch the slacktivism and take action. Wait, what is slacktivism? So in my mind, slacktivism is like, you see a tweet that says... We have to fight to stop this bad thing that's happening right now. And you retweet that and go, man, I made a difference today. That <laughs> that shouldn't be where you stop, you know? <laughs> like, while you should retweet that, because awareness is important, there are other things you can do to actually, like, take action and get involved, you know? Like, send an email, make a phone call, give a donation. There are other steps you can take where people will have a better chance of feeling the effects of your support. Go beyond slacktivism. Text NOD to 22422 and Planned Parenthood will periodically send you ways to help. That's NOD to 22422. Message and data rates may apply. This episode of The Nod is brought to you by Showtime and their new original series, The Shy. The Shy, as in Chicago, of course, takes an authentic look at life on the South Side of Chicago by following the stories of those who live there. And we got a chance to watch the very first episode. It's kind of like an ensemble drama. Mm. It's like a group of interconnected, intergenerational wow. Chicagoans. And they're just trying to get by from day to day. And it's one of those things that kind of reminds you that everybody is connected. Mm. And that, like, your actions or even just one action toward another person can cause things to turn or change in ways that you could never have anticipated. No, you're right. And the shy is created by Lena Waithe. And she's... Uh, Emmy winner. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Super talented woman, also a Chicagoan. I feel like I'm kind of being brought into her world, and it's pretty interesting. The Shy is also executive produced by Common and features music from other Chicago native rappers you know and love. The Shy is available to stream right now. And if you're new to Showtime, you can try your first month for free. Just go to Showtime.com and enter code THE NOD. That's Showtime.com, promo code THE NOD. Offer ends February 1st. Welcome back. Welcome back. I just love John. <laughs> I really do. I just love John. I just want the world to know. Uh, you know, I mean, obviously, in addition to being, you know, John's, you know, your best friend. John yes. is also one of my best friends, and I just adore him. And you know what? One day we are going to have to have him back on the show, even if it's just... You know, for the two of us to just get on your nerves and antagonize you. We'll see. We've got a pack slate. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> anyway, in continuing with the theme of shout outs, Eric, I know you have something you want to share yes. with the class. Very excited. So I actually want to recommend this podcast episode. I heard it a long time ago, but I've kind of like never really stopped thinking about it. You've actually heard me talk about I've it. I've definitely heard you talk about it so many times, so many times. Actually, 
I'm just wondering, like, w- why? Like, what about this has stuck with you for so long that you must talk to me about it constantly? <laughs> Well, like, obviously on the show, we are thinking about, like, what it means to be Black and... A couple times. <laughs> <laughs> and just in general, like, how folks, like, grapple with their identity. And, like, and I think a lot about that. And, like, specifically, like, how kids process that information. Yeah. You know, we kind of, like, touched on it a bit in our episode A for Afrocentric. Mm-hmm. But, like, this episode just kind of explores that in, like, such an interesting way. It's from the uh, podcast, The Longest, Shortest Time. Mm, that's, like, your fave. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you like it, too. Yeah, no, I, I love The Longest, Shortest Time. Like, they, it's just, like, the storytelling is good. Like, it, obviously, it's a podcast about parenting, but it's not, like, a podcast only for parents. Like, I listen to it. I get a lot out of it. I think it's good. Yeah, exactly. It's just about, like, it's just great stories, you know? Yeah. And so, like, in this episode, the host, Hillary Frank, she's interviewing a woman who came across something from her childhood that just, like, showed her that she had started thinking about race and her identity a lot sooner than she thought. Mm, that sounds like there's a twist somewhere <laughs> in here. Oh, well, I'm excited to finally hear the episode. Well, I'm glad. I'll just let it play. My name is Kiria Traber, and I'm a theater artist in New York. Kiria's mom is white. Her dad's black. Her parents were really young when they had her, and her dad wasn't very involved. Kiria is close with him now, but back when she was little, he lived in Hawaii, so she didn't see him much. And um, my mom was a single mom, and I was an only child, and so one of the tricks that she came up with to keep me entertained was to give me a a cassette tape recorder. Kiria's mom recently sent her the cassette that she used to record on. So between the ages of four and six, Kiria recorded and re-recorded herself over and over again on this one 90-minute tape. I've actually got it right here in front of me. Um, There's a self-portrait on the back of the case, scribbled in pencil with um, big, frizzy hair and hearts drawn all over the clothes. The spine says, Kiria knows it all. All is in all capital letters. Um, And then... Side one is labeled Curia, colon, Issues and Answers, 88. And side two uh, says Curia Speaks Out, 88. So on this tape, um, Curia recorded all the typical things that kids record. So she'd start stories. The universe caught on fire. So then we did tell mother and daddy. And quickly end them. And then everybody was sad. And that's the end of the story. She'd get her mom to introduce her made-up talk show. And now, it's Dr. Kiria Traber with Bop Talk. Go ahead. You know, I don't think I want to do this. And then, one day, when Kiria was six years old, she got out the tape recorder and sat her mom down in the living room. You can kind of hear her in the background encouraging me to start. Go. Hey, mama. Hey, mama. It's a black thing. She won't understand because she ain't black. She's a white. She only knows a white thing. The white thing. I say, mama. And um, I, 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 f- I freestyled a rap about race to my mom. My mama say, you came out of my stomach, so I must know, I must know what the black thing is. And I say, no, mama, you gotta listen to me. You know, I say, it's a black thing. You know, only black people can understand. That's not my exact words, but that's my, my meaning. And what was your understanding of it? Well, um, if you listen to this song, it seems like I have a, an understanding of it being cool, of it being um, valuable, of it being special. Because, Mama, it's a black thing. Hey, Mama, it's a black thing. You gotta listen to me. She never will listen. Don't plug your ears. Don't cover your eyes. Hey, Mama, hey, Baba, it's a black thing. Thing. Hey, mama, hey, mama, it's a black thing. It's also directed at your mom. 
Did, did you did it feel aggressive at the time? I wouldn't say aggressive. Um, I would say proud. I would say um, I mean, maybe defiant, but um, I wasn't yelling. You know, I was asserting myself, and so I guess that's you know. All that's all our journey as children, right, is to separate ourselves from our parents and find our own individuality. And I guess mine started with being black. And I say, Mama, you don't know what? It's a black thing. Why did you feel the need to sing that to her? Well, I remember at the time, um, I was in elementary school and... Um, you know, this is like the late 80s, early 90s in Berkeley, California... Race and being positive about diversity is certainly part of the culture. And so at my school, I know there was white kids, black kids, and mixed kids. And I had a, f- a couple of friends that were also mixed, like me. And we called ourselves that. And we, were, and we would talk about it a lot um, at five or six. So we're mixed, we're mixed. And so I guess... I, that's the thing is that I'm surprised to hear myself saying it's a black thing, not it's a mixed thing. I was so generally in my memory so proudly mixed. Did you did you identify as more black than white? <sighs> it's a really complicated question. <laughs> um, yeah, and it changed. You know, it's it's changed a lot in my life. Um, yeah, and so like your blackness came from your dad who wasn't in your life right. and and your mom was right um but you look different from her yeah and so so tell me about how your ident- your ethnic identity has changed over time yeah well um you know early on i definitely knew that i was different than the majority of people and definitely from the black girls and they had these beautiful braids that their parents did and um they were always really perfectly kept, and they had a lot of my beads in their braids. My mom didn't know how to do that, and my hair was actually often really, often really messy. And um, and then, so there's this one particular thing that happened in in my um, preschool uh, days that I remember. Um, another mother came to pick up her daughter, and we were not friends. My this this daughter, um, so I didn't know this girl well or her mother. The mom told me to come over to her. And she undid the braids that my mom had done in my hair and redid them. She greased them up with coconut oil and retwisted my hair and and then left um, from my memory. She didn't stay to talk to my mom and say, this is what I did or this is why I did it. But then my mom was upset after and I was, I think I felt ashamed. I was like I had done something wrong. But... um. I talked to my mom, actually, and she said something that blew my mind. Um, She also was getting a lot of comments from adults, um, and especially black women. She understood that they were trying to help, that that actually she felt like there was a community of people who were raising black children, and that she was a part of that, and she had support. And the conversation, she said, felt productive, even if they were sometimes had some judgment in them. Was there a part of you that you felt like your mom did get? Yeah. Oh, definitely. I mean, I think other than my Black identity, there was a sense that, and I, because I feel this way now, that, that my mom is the person I can go to to say, can you believe this happened? (laughs) Or like, you know what I mean? And she's the one, no matter what, who's going to be like, yeah, totally. But then there's this this thing, this this giant thing that that does make me really different. And does she get it? Like, if you need to talk to her about, um, like, race stuff um, in your life, does she get that? Yeah, she does. She does. And... and um, not without, you know, some work. As I, as I, you know, in my adulthood came to understand my identity in much more nuanced ways, then I had to share that with her if I wanted her to understand, and, and she was very open to it. Um, and, you know, we've had a lot of um, moments when our country is having racial conflicts, and I get to 
talk about it with my mom um, in a way, I guess it can be really cathartic, you know, because being black in America can be really painful and there's a lot of distance and a lot of difference and a lot of feeling misunderstood. And so to be able to talk to a, a, a person who identifies as white and say, can I explain this thing to you from my perspective and have them go, yeah, I'm totally listening. And then ultimately understand as best they can. It feels really good. It gives me a lot of hope. So, hope you enjoyed that. I did. I really did. Kyria, man. Yeah, that was real. Bars. It's Black Fang. (laughs) It's a Black Fang. So that was actually just a part of a longer episode about how kids and their parents talk about race and identity. Mm. The full episode is actually called Mama Don't Understand. And Kyria actually has a podcast of her own called Cheers and Queers. She says it's like a boozy podcast about Black queer life. Mm. We'll make sure to link to both The Long Shortest Time and Cheers and Queers in our show notes so you should check it out. Yes. So... uh those are our shout outs for this episode but we are wondering like what are y'all feeling like what are you into right now what do you want to shout out so please hit us up on Twitter and let us know we want to know we are at The Nod Show on Twitter that's how you find us at The Nod Show The Nod is produced by me Brittany Luce with Eric Eddings Kate Parkinson Morgan and Emmanuel Berry with production assistance from Wallace Mack. Our senior producer is Sarah Abdurrahman. We are edited by Annie Rose Strasser. Engineering from Cedric Wilson. Special thanks to MR Daniel. Fact-checking by Max Gibson. Our theme music and additional music is by Khalid B., Haley Shaw, Jupiter, Chili Willie, and Kevin J. Simon. And if you were sold on the concept of white jeans, John has some tips for how to pick the perfect pair and keep them clean. To find out more, subscribe to our newsletter at gimletmedia.com slash newsletter. Thanks to our sponsor, Planned Parenthood. Planned Parenthood believes no one, your boss included, should be able to take away access to birth control. But that's what recent rollbacks by the Trump administration mean. Join Planned Parenthood and take action. Text NOD to 22422. That's NOD to 22422. Thanks to our sponsor, Showtime, and their new drama series, The Shy. The Shy is available to stream right now. And if you're new to Showtime, you can try your first month for free. Just go to Showtime.com and enter code THE NOD. That's Showtime.com, promo code THE NOD. Offer ends February 1st.